Well, that was a very uncomfortable stretch I had to do to get both of these recording at basically the same time. Didn't make sure my hair looks presentable because why would I remember to do that? Uh, you can just deal with the beard, to be honest. Uh, you're just going to have to. If you're wondering what uh, what's probably making a little ASMR noise back here, it's these guys, these comics that I got. For this week, uh, Absolute Power, which I'm still not exactly sure 100% how I feel. I like some of the stuff, definitely. There's a really good moment in Absolute Power number two where everybody's like debating who's going to be the leader because they need a leader. And Superman and Batman, uh, Batman's just kind of like, yo, you can, you can choose whoever you want, Superman, because, I mean... You're fucking Superman. Even if you're depowered, you're still like the best of us. And everybody else is just like arguing. And then all of a sudden Dick Grayson comes in and he just takes the lead. And Batman, he goes, that's my boy, which is fucking awesome. And then he just listens to Dick when he tells him what to do. No comment, no nothing. You just see Batman jump into action and it's such a cool little moment for Batman because it just shows like where he is as a character now, which is, you know, being the cool fucking dad who's just good at the whole dad thing. And as somebody who used to be really critical of Batman as a dad as a character, that's really cool to me. And I think I talked about this for way longer than I intended. But yeah, uh, pick this up if only for that little Dick Grayson moment. I'm going to say that. It's also Mark Wade and Mora is a great artist. So, yeah, just those two things. Uh, Scarlet. Uh, <laughs> Scarlet. I like this. I don't have too much to comment on. I really like G.I. Joe. I really like Transformers. I've been a fan of the Skybound universe as it's been coming out. So that's really cool, too. And then um, you've got fucking grommets, which kind of want to do a video on this and uh, Godzilla Skater Die because it came out at basically the same time. I think Godzilla Skater Die was like Skater Die was like a week or two after and they're kind of running simultaneously. I don't know how many issues Godzilla is going to have. But yeah, it's fun reading these at the same time. Bigger fan of these. It took me a little bit to like really get into it. But with the second issue and now the third, they're really finding, you know, they're, they're really finding their, I'm trying to think of it. <laughs> they're really, they're really starting to find the voice for it. We'll just say that. So yeah, I, I suggest picking up grommets if it's at your local comic book sh store or if you have the money to, like, purchase it on Image's website or whatever. It's a lot of fun. Um, then we have Task Force 7, which is another absolute power. It's, um, pretty good. Uh, this issue was probably my favorite of the Task Force 7. I barely remember last week's. No, now I kind of do. It's, like, just them gathering a bunch of the heroes. This week it's about one of the one of the uh, mesos like discovering you know having a free will and that's a lot of fun. And then you have got Batman, which is cute. Uh, I know Zdarsky's run has been controversial to say the least, at least during his Zur and R arc, and. But this one's fun. Uh, you get to meet one of Waller's kids who's, I think, called Deadeye. And <laughs> they even make jokes about how unoriginal he is. So that's fun. Um, or no, was it her nephew? It was someone in Waller's family. But yeah, fucking pretty good. You get Batman and Catwoman being Batman and Catwoman. So that's fun. And then here's the one that you probably know of if you're on Twitter because it ends with <laughs> fucking punchline as 
basically okay good sorry uh just wanted to check to make sure everything was kosher it ends with punchline as like trying not to say twitch thought but <laughs> that's basically what it is um it's her as like a hot tub streamer and it's this weird game that she's hosting as a fucking <laughs> game show streamer. So that's not game show. You know what I mean? I guess kind of game show. It, it's a goofy ass book, but it's fun. I'm probably going to pick up issue two at the very least. Oh, I'm way too close. Uh, I hope the further I get to the camera doesn't fuck up the audio or like make it so you can barely see me on camera but um what else was i gonna say i picked up Ooh, hit the mic hit the fucking mic uh, uh kindle I'm going to get these out of the way while I'm at it. Uh, okay. Oh, Christ, this was not... The problem is, this is like the only clean place in my room as far as backdrops. Because... Like, there's not a lot of shit on my floor, but otherwise, there's a whole bunch of shit all over my room. But, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I got Space Ghost as well, so that's fun. Uh, I don't know enough about Space Ghost to know if uh, Zorak's character is, like, completely overhauled from the original Hanna-Barbera cartoon. I mean... You're not getting the characters from Space Ghost Coast to Coast. I think that goes without saying because that show was just... It's really Hanna-Barbera's MO to just kind of give people their shit and go... Take the reins, do whatever the fuck you want with it because... I don't know, we're not really relevant anymore. So you do your own shit and we'll just do with it what we will. So he's like this weird blood cultist who works for Lokar. And so far, I only know Lokar from fucking coast to coast. For the most part, I know most of these characters from coast to coast. So <laughs> all I'm thinking is, oh, weird. Uh, Zorak is now working for the fucking Shakespearean guy from coast to coast. Um, But yeah, so that's... That's a fun read. The The series isn't bad. It's it's on the darker side, but the, he also has the kid sidekicks and the fucking monkey, which I guess is just kind of a thing in comics, so what are you going to do? Uh, but And then uh, next is My Adventures with Superman, which I got issue number three. I'm a fan of the series. I got kind of nervous when um season two seemed to really be going the Veltramite angle with kryptonians but they kind of did and kind of didn't uh i'd say just watch it to understand like i really like what they did with brainiac i really like what they did with supergirl and the comics are fun i think right now they've got like an amazo in the comics and it's kind of weird because you're like, okay, this is not canon at all, is it? So uh, they're probably going to do something to get the Amazo out of the scene by the end of this arc in the comics. Because, yeah, what are you going to do with it? The comics also have um, Bloodsport in them, which is fun. It's fun to have him be one of the main villains. Because he isn't in the show, who knows if it's because of the weird DC embargo shit. But I would love to see him in the show. Uh, they'd probably go a different direction. 
some people say the designs have no sauce. I think that's not always true. There are some where they're way too uniform. But otherwise, yeah, I like the My Adventures with Superman comics. In some ways, they do do things that kind of flesh out the show because I was very critical of the show as like drama or any of that because at least for season one and sometimes even season two, the show is just at its best when it's a goofy adventure. Whereas sometimes the drama just feels really overwrought, melodramatic, like X-Men melodrama. X-Men melodrama, but not as good, if that makes sense. But yeah, so that's my comic book call. I might do more of these. I was very rambly. I'm trying not to be, but it's kind of what happens when I don't have a script. But until next time, this is Mad Silence, signing out. Oh yeah, like, comment, subscribe, whatever. Uh, bye. <laughs>